What's going on guys? Sin for the win here. We are back with our franchise mode as the Buffalo Sabres and picking up where we left off here beginning of the year 12 12 and 2. Not amazing, but we're getting production from the areas that we need it. You know, our young guys are growing, they're producing well. Nylander, Middlestat are doing great. Um you know, Eichel not so much, Reinhardt not so much, but these are guys who are kind of near the end of their growth spurts anyway, so it's still looking okay. And defensively, we went going with these pairings. Eichel, an 86 overall now, age 20. This guy will easily get to 90 overall and probably be a great guy to have paired up with Ristolainen. We'll see what happens with those two. But right now, we got Barry playing up there. And Aguli is also an 83. Now he's a 23. He could still grow a couple more, man. I mean, this guy could be an 85 overall, and that would be pretty solid uh, for our top four. So hopefully that happens. Now, when it comes to our goaltender situation... We got Laner playing a lot of games. Lucan and not playing so much. And now while I could switch to automated goalie rotations, it doesn't look like Laner is going to get statistical growth. He's got two years left on his deal. And while we can wait to deal him, it doesn't really matter at this point because it, he's not going to get statistical growth this year. And then we wouldn't be able to like flip him in the next year on like a one-year deal. So... And with our cap situation, we couldn't probably, like, sign him to a larger deal and then dish him off. I think we kind of have to almost almost deal him right now. So I was thinking about doing that and then bringing back up Omar here to be our quote-unquote starter. And him and Lukanen should split time very well with them being so close in overall. Lukanen will get a few more games played and uh, we'll be able to get some return value for Laner. So... I think we're going to look into that before we make a move here, and that'll also help uh, help us do a little bit worse, I guess, and maybe get a, our pick a bit better here. So let's take a look at that. For our picks, we got two firsts right now, three seconds, that's five, and that's the max we can have in, uh, in the first and second round, I believe. That's what we said. So we can have five maximum picks there. So unless we just went off, we can't take another one of those back, but we might do that to grab another first or something. So it's five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, we can pick up one extra pick and no more in the top five unless we dish one of these off. So what could we do and what could we get here for Laner? Now, they could get a first, but it'll have to be a fairly late first, but that's okay. You know, we could actually get a, maybe a decent first if we trade along a second, but unfortunately, oh, there are some teams interested in Robin Laner. Okay, Detroit is interested in him. Now, I doubt they're not going to want to give up that pick. Most likely, and it might have some... No, oh, it has a lot of value on it. Yeah, that's probably too much. Oilers might be a better bet here. That's a bit better to try to get. Oh, yeah, I mean... We'd have to chuck in at least a second. Yeah, we would. And that still is not quite even there, so... Unfortunate. And I don't necessarily want to retain. It's a full extra year. And we will have some entry levels coming up. Chicago here, also listed as a rebuilder. They got... Mm, unfortunately, they do not want to give up their picks. So, it's going to actually be kind of difficult here. San Jose wants to give up their pick. Listed as a contender. That's way too much value, though, I think. And they don't want Laner. Even with Toronto's first in there, that's not quite enough. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So, yeah, I'm not quite seeing how that would work. It might have to be to Edmonton or something. Or just somewhere that we can get a, a, a pick that... Man, but I really wanted it for, like, to have to give up a second in here. Because we can't necessarily grab a first without chalking that up, so... All right, let's see here. We might even chuck in a couple of the later seconds or something there. I'm just trying to think what the best way is to go about this. Firsts are great to have, obviously. <laughs> and with that second in there, it's close, but I don't think it's enough, especially since they don't want to give this pick up. I'll see what they say, but I don't think this is going to be enough. I mean, the value looks really good. Don't get me wrong. The value looks great. It's just, I don't think that's quite enough. No, it's not where it needs to be at all compared to what we're asking them to give up. It's it's true. I mean, 
even in their goalie situation. They don't have a goalie, so they really need this guy. But not enough to where they want to give up a first. It is only Robin Lehner. Understandable. The other option is to maybe pick up... Oh, no, we couldn't do that. I was thinking we could pick up yet another second if we threw in the first. Oh, wait, could we? No, we could... No. That would be too many picks. So if we did that, we could only get back like a third. I don't think that's worth it. To grab, to, we're kind of switching first, and like, if, if we give them a deep, what if they turn out to be a playoff team? Like, that's just too much of a risk in my eyes. I'd rather have the quantity in that case, because we don't know for a fact that this pick is going to be quality. So, we're kind of stuck be between, a, between a rock and a hard place with this. Uh, we might, like, I want to go for some kind of a first here. But it's not looking great. So... We can maybe take a chance on a t on another team and just try to get a first and have to... We'd obviously have to give up a second at some point. So, just before the draft. So, we'd have to keep that in mind. But it's just... We're very, very close here. See, like, Tampa's... Like, they could fall out. They really don't have a back... Well... Ingram, I can't remember how good he is. He's obviously higher than 70. He might be high 70s. They want to give him up. So we'd definitely be able to get that first. They'd be over the cap, though. So unfortunately, that doesn't work. Yeah, we're actually... It's going to be harder to dish off later than I thought. So I might have to give this some thought. Let's see if Columbus wants that. If they were willing to give up their first. We add a second in there quite far off now that's one of the lower seconds so we're gonna try the higher one and if they still say it's really really far off then obviously uh they'd have to throw someone on waivers hmm who is that that they have to put on waivers okay not even <laughs> i said nutivara they'd have to, so they just have someone oh wow yeah oh god they have a lot of defensemen here I see what they're demeaning. They got him on the block, though. But I don't really want him. Alright, we're going to take a look at Arizona here. Because I can't really tell what their goalie situation is. Besides Kemper, maybe. He could be. He's in the NHL, so he's likely their backup. I don't know how good he is. I don't think he's that good. They don't want the goaltender. But, Ronta leaving, maybe. Potentially. They might reject because they'd have to put someone on waivers here. But the value is what I'm looking at. And the value is very close. And if we could throw it through for one of these other seconds. Such as St. Louis's or the other. Yeah, so they'd have to put him on waivers. We could take back Kemper, but that's just not worth it. It's just, it isn't. We got to just look for something else here. So Coro. He shouldn't have to go through way... Damn it, he does. But that's a weak-ass contract. Would they even be mad if they had to put him on waivers? Maybe. Maybe they wouldn't like that. And they don't want to give up their pick either. And they'd be over the cap. This is actually way, 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 way harder than I thought it would be. But, if there's a will, there could be a way here. Maybe New York's. Hold on. Which pick had more value? Yeah, New York's did, so that's the one we want to try to go for. That actually looks good. Value-wise, it looks very good. Now we'll have to see what the hell they say, but value-wise, it looks really good. Laner in a second for the first from New York Rangers. Yeah, see, they just it's the fucking waivers thing. And it's just going to kill us here. Because if they don't... The two places that need a goaltender... Unfortunately... Just the, the value of the pick is just too much. So I don't really know... What the hell we can do here. Unless... No, we really can't do much. Alright, well this trade isn't actually related to Laner. But it's something that we can actually do... 
so that whatever we ship laner off for is kind of more inconsequential. Well, this is the elite goalie guy that we have to pretty much give up this year because we're not going to sign him. He's the guy, he just had a lot of negatives, and it's elite prospect goaltender. We could trade it from the first for this year, from the Sharks, ship off the second so we can still stay within the uh, uh, constraints of our uh, draft pick rules, and then grab another first from next year, which has very low value because the Sharks are still rated as a great team. Now, the value looks a little bit skewed. I don't know if we'll be able to get both those picks, but we're going to freaking try because this would be an incredible deal for us. Get yet another first from the next year and get this first from this year, which by the looks of it, we're not giving them any good roster players right now. So if they keep up how they're going, that pick could be huge. I don't know if this will work. It actually did. Wow. I think we just ran away with something that's potentially great. Now, again, if the Sharks are bad again next year, that pick will just increase in value. It had a very low value. It's just like it's a contender pick, so they're not expected to be that as bad as they're doing this year. The only reason why their pick this year was shot so high was because of that. So that trade gives us a great deal here. We got now still five within the you know first two rounds. Three firsts now, two seconds. And now when we're looking to ship off laner, we could be much, much more flexible. And we don't even have to get picks. We're going to get picks from next year. Like, we can get another first from next year. And in in that way, we can go to kind of any team. A team who's good. You know, it doesn't really matter where that, you know... A team who might, like... Okay, here's what I'm thinking. A team that I always used to like to trade for here. I don't know how they're doing right now. Minnesota, they're kind of doing decently. But when they're as they keep going, their contracts get worse and worse. Studnik's gonna start declining. Now again, they'll probably be like, no, we'd have to put someone on waivers. Like Markstrom. So probably wouldn't work. But at the same time, I mean they're willing to give up a pick from next year. And they'd have too many goalies. So we'd have to take someone back. Just because they have too many goalies in general. We could take Markstrom back and have him sit. It's only a guy and i could even send him down and lose him for free i mean if if we're just but the problem is i'm actually not too sure of his trade value and before i do that let's actually see if they'd be wanting to just give anyone up here the hell they got mcelaney too what the hell are they doing let's see if they okay so that's just any goalie now this obviously won't go through they'll probably tell us something about waivers well not saying anything about waivers, but the value is just still obviously not there. Which is unfortunate. Because these contracts with them would make this great. Now we could chuck in this fringe star. That would help. 59 and 19. I mean, that's a bit of extra value. We're not going to need this. See what they say to that. Oh, it would work. Holy hell. They're not going to say anything about waivers. You know what? I think this is good. They're not going to say anything about waivers. We're giving up a goaltender we're not going to really use in the future. We're giving up laner who just frees up space. We're getting a first for him, taking back McElhaney. He could, uh, he, and honestly, he can play in our AHL. Unless he gets sent up to our NHL right now, we have to clear waivers, but he should clear waivers. I don't see that he doesn't. We have to call up Olmark, obviously, but it's saying if we have to call him up Olmark, it makes sense that this guy's not going to be down, or not going to be up on the team since we have to call up Olmark. At least that's how I understand it. The game can do something different, but I like this deal. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through with it here. Again, this is a pick from next year that we're grabbing i actually should count i mean next year doesn't matter as much but this year i want to make sure we still have 11 we can take back one more but we might want to save that for the deadline if we want to make another move or just grab it now <laughs> see if we can grab something now no quite close to fair value though <laughs> so we could still get a pick Oh my goodness, yeah. So we're getting a first from next year and a fifth pick from this year for Laner, McCullough, and then also grabbing McElhaney here. Again, with the record this year, with Suter and Parise just going to get older, still on those terrible contracts, I like this deal. So I'm going to go I'm gonna go through with it. So two trades made right there, and this does a couple things. This will give Lucan in more playing time, this should make our team a bit worse this year to improve our own value of our pick. We collected a lot more top quality picks for these next two years. And we didn't really give up anything essential to our core. And that's kind of everything that we should be after right now. That's essentially what we're looking for. Yeah, they did Yeah, they did put... No, no, no. 
Yes, they did put McElhaney up here. Sons of bitch, whatever. I don't care if he gets claimed. He was just to make that trade go through so we can get claimed all he wants if he wants to. Oh, he doesn't have to... Oh, no. Omok doesn't have to clear... Wait, what? Oh, oh, because he's getting called up. He doesn't have to clear waivers. So let's see if McElhaney gets claimed right here. He might. Uh, I don't think so. No, he didn't. So rip McElhaney. We hardly knew the... <laughs> someone someone get a, uh, a, a video... Uh... <laughs> Someone get a video tribute for McElhaney. First time spent on the uh, Sabres here, please. All right, so now we have an 81 and an 80 goaltender. They should split time a lot better. Lukanen should get more games. And hell, if Olmark does really good and he gets crazy good for some reason. And now we could also have him as a backup. So I'll probably want to extend him. Hopefully sooner rather than later. Because if for some reason he does really good and gets statistical growth, might be a good idea to have him extended. Um, I do need to switch that in my AHL. So we'll keep Wilcox in. The other guy doesn't need to play. We'll get McElhaney in there. Yeah, Brunette. He could just sit there scratched. Doesn't really matter. Okay, so we've made some trades here. And I like them. I think, I think, I think our future is a lot more secure with that. And for the present, doesn't really matter. <laughs> because I, we're not making the playoffs again. And if this just helps to improve our chances at another really good pick, screw it. Let's let's go for it. Let's kind of let's do it. So these last couple years we've stocked up on those are going to be our last two like heavy heavy drafting years pretty much. After that it'll be kind of straightforward. We'll still be able to get a lot, and then we'll basically have ourselves a set in stone franchise from there on in. So all right, there we go with that. And now we'll continue with the sim here. So no more laner. As I said, though, he is likely not going to get any statistical growth. So that last year on his contract, we didn't need to wait for that to trade him. We could just ship him off and and get it done. And that's what we did. And I love the returns that we got. We also got rid of that goaltender who we would have had to either sign this year or let go. And I think what we got for him could be very good. Because that Sharks pick, if they keep up the way they're going. Oh, there's yeah, by the way, there's a franchise power forward. So, hey, if we end up getting the first overall, GG. He's uh, got 36 points in 25 games played. He's just uh, looks like another great freaking player. And even if we don't, even if we don't, there's a, there's a lot of great stuff in here. Defensive defenseman, unfortunately a lefty. Yeah, all the freaking defensemen are always lefties up here at the top. You got another sniper. That is the guy that you want, though, pretty much, is the franchise number one overall. That's who you want. All right, so we'll continue here. Another win right there, Omar. <laughs> really? Really, bro? You come back. You get injured. You force me to do things. So, McElhaney. Oh, my God. He's actually better than I thought he would be. Essentially, yeah. So, he, obviously, he didn't get claimed the first time. Stands to reason he won't get claimed the second time. Watch, he will get claimed this time. Um, because I said it, and because I called him up, he's gonna get claimed now. That's, game, game's gonna love to do that to me. I bet ya. I bet ya. How's Lucan and doing? Wow, really good. Alright. Oh, oh, yeah. Sorry, Rochester. <laughs> Forgot about you for a minute. Alright, continue. Lost right there, but we're not allowing a huge amount of goals. It's just our goal scoring is kinda iffy. Cool. So that was fun. That was a couple, uh, I mean, couldn't I just, you know, sat you on the bench and played Lucan in a couple times, bud? Couldn't I have done that? But no, you have to make me go through, leap through these hoops to give McElhaney some hope and now potentially lose him. I could have just called up the 50-something guy. Watch, I will lose him now and then I'll be kicking myself. I don't really, I don't really care. This guy was literally nothing. Nope, didn't get claimed. <laughs> they, an actual message pops up now. You don't have to wait to see if the morale thing hits. An actual message will pop up to tell you if you've lost someone. To waivers. So that's nice. What a nice feature that is. Alrighty. Now we're good. Now we'll continue here. We've actually won a surprising amount of games. Um, yeah. Three, uh, no, three out of six. It's not that great. Okay, so here is the injuries. Now, I have had someone say, maybe you should turn them down. The thing about these injuries are, is they're kind of hit and miss. Sometimes you get a lot of injuries, sometimes you don't. And that, and the slider, I set them down to 20. So, it's really not that bad. 
And like I said, we don't notice them when they're not happening, obviously. And that's the majority of the time. But what they when they hit, they seem to kind of happen in bunches, which makes it seem really over the top. And But I still like the, the injuries overall. And why are we doing better since uh, that trade? <laughs> We're 18, 15, and 3. Tough loss against the Pens right there, sure. But why were we, like, on the whole doing better? I'm not exactly sure why. But, uh, it was a thing there. And let's see if that thing continues, because that would be very interesting. It would fit in with the EA Sim Engine, though. Yeah, Lukanen's doing good. Olmark is not. <laughs> Damn. Whatever. So likely won't have to give him an extension now. We can wait then. It didn't look like he was doing good. I was going to wait to see how we do to see, hmm, should I give him an extension on the off chance that he gets stat growth and hope that it's a very easy uh, tradable thing or, or what? Okay, so that month was interesting. Not as many win. Yeah, it was not as good as I thought, but still, like, we won... I think we won like about 500, but we got some overtime or an overtime loss. No, two overtime losses. And again, 19, 16, and 4. <laughs> we kind of improved. Somehow, our locker room chemistry is better. But I'm, I'm just kind of perplexed right there. I guess Lucan and getting more starts really seemed to help because he was actually killing it. Well, Omar, not so much, but whatever. As long as Lukanen does good, do we care? Not really. Look at those goals for 3.21. That's what I'm talking about, boys. 2.85 goals against. We don't care. 19.8 power play. You'd like to be at 20. That's close enough. Bad penalty kill. Not so good on home ice. There's a thing right in the middle of that 8. You see that on the bottom? It's like the background, and it's 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 in the 8, and it's, it looks really weird. It looks like some snot on the screen. Nice visual there. Better on the road. 5-3-2 in the last 10. Like I said, kind of a 500-ish month, but not really since overtime losses and we might have even won an extra game. Oh my goodness, wrist line and continued to kick ass. But Eichel leading the way for forwards, 36 points. Reinhardt with 31. Nylander up there with 29. Silverberg with 26. Skinner with 26. Middle stat was 26. Like, we've got all the... Ooh, look at Mayroff. Look at Mayroff. Dude, he's actually on pace for 40. Now, he's not going to get it. I highly doubt it. They rarely... But if he does, that'd be actually insane. It's got two goals in the power play, so I mean 17 goals, 5-on-5, five five on the third line. Give it up for Yakov Mayorov, Jacob Mayorov, I don't know. What are the Russian, he's not Russian, I don't know what flag that is. La no, it's not, is that, that's not Latvian. Bull Fuck, it's somewhere, it's some kind of Slav, I'm sure, though. I think it's somewhere in the uh, Bal <laughs> Balkans, I don't know. I don't know. I am terrible with flags, don't ask me to recognize flags. Tage Thompson not doing great, but that plus or minus is good. Good shutdown here and there. Fourth line, not amazing. Defensively, Ristolainen's killing it. Barry and Dolan both with 19 points. And we've seen to do better since we made those changes. Ruda doing great, man. What a free agency signing he was. Now, it's only for a year. We can always extend him if we want. But uh, him and Bolu down there, solid top six performance from those two. Very solid. Gribe has stepped in, has done okay. And like I said, let's check it out. Yeah, Lukanen's doing great, man. He's had to actually come and mop up more than anything, but 4, 2, and 1 is his record with good personal stats. Olmark, not great. <laughs> let's just say that. But that's fine. As long as they're splitting time well enough, we want to give Lukanen a certain amount of games. Again, I don't care about Olmark's personal stats. He's done growing. He's going to be a backup. What we care about is being careful with uh, Lukanen here. That's that's the main thing, and I think that we are. I think he'll get enough games now, but not too much, and that's something I do want to keep an eye on, but he didn't get enough in the beginning, but I think he should get about 20, 30 games here, which will be perfect, I think, and that will help us, obviously, for the future. This guy could be the number one. We might not even have to draft a goaltender, which would be huge. Middle stats in 84 now, definitely getting natural growth. But the year he's having, he should erase that statistical minus as well as potentially gain some of his own. Maybe not gain anything, but he should erase it with the year he's having. Gergensen's minus, yeah, definite minuses. He's kind of just done. Um, Eichel, those are all, yeah, it's all, oh, 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 oh yeah, it's some, some natural growth in there to his face-offs. Good, only 82, get it better. Reinhardt. That's all statistical. Most of these are going to be statistical. Although Dolan, that should be... No, I think we checked, and it was unfortunately all statistical. 
But he's still only 20, so there's no way he's done growing. Zero chance. Mayorov, that should be natural, right? No, he's got statistical minuses. What the fuck? <laughs> okay. Grow, Mayorov. But he did. He, did, he got an offseason boost, which was interesting. Anyway. All right, so... Manino's growing a bit. Where is these elites? So McGrath actually did... Well, he was a 77. Now up to a 78. I'm still kind of iffy, man. Like, at this point, I kind of want to just sign him. Because the uh, off-contract thing isn't working as well. On the flip side, he's 19 years old only, almost 80 overall. So it's still not a rush. Byfield obviously doesn't need to be signed. But again, he's not growing that well either. But he's not... It doesn't make sense to sign him at the same time. Because he came from the juniors. So we couldn't... We can't play him. So we have to just... Try to get him to grow. We're not getting a lot of growth. That should change, man. I don't think this is a hold. This, we're, we're kind of getting unlucky with some of the growth here so far. I don't think that'll last. That's got to change. We've got to get some growth in there. That would be just insanely unlucky if we didn't. All right. So let's continue here. Keep it going. I'm not going to hit the panic button on those prospects yet. And I don't even think panic would be a correct word to use. Concern, maybe. But even so... We've got plenty of time with all those. Plenty of time. A lot of those guys are just really high overall for their age, too. So that could be a contributing factor to them not getting huge amounts of growth. Although it's not always. Okay. Weird. Like like I said, very weird that we're doing better without, uh, without Laner. But, wow, a shutout right there for whoever was in net. But look at this. We're just not allowing a hell of a lot of goals. Like, even when we lose right there, that's only two goals allowed. Lukanen just really seems to be getting the job done, and maybe even uh, Olmark in there doing a bit better. Hopefully doing a bit better. Yeah, so Valcourt. What the hell league is this guy from? No, he is being scouted. It just doesn't say. Oh, because he doesn't have him discovered. That would be why. All right. So let's check here. Nothing medium elite for the uh, mid to late. And low elite, still nothing. Our scouts are they're working on it. Again, we don't have the greatest scout team, but they should be getting a bit better. Still early-ish, but I, I would like to see a bit more. We'll see what happens. Still got time. Lost right there, but we get a point. So, I'm still not sure what to make of this team right now. They're, we're kind of we're kind of doing okay. We're hanging in there. A couple more losses, but we get points out of them. Like, we're 23, 18, and 9. Like... It's not good enough for playoffs, but we're right there, weirdly. We're only three points out. Or a natural two, actually. But you look at the Canadians because they have those two extra games played. You have to get both wins in that. So let's just say three. Naturally or not, because that's probably the gap there. Again, we're probably not going to make it. But still. Speaking of which, please don't tell me the Sharks just went on a crazy streak. No, good. They're still down there with only 46 points. Huge. Huge, 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 huge. That's very low to upsets Ottawa down there. But, yeah, they're pretty damn low down there. So, that's good for us. All right, let's check out how the team's doing. See them goals for. I think our goals for dropped off. Yeah, 3.04. Goals against got slightly better. 2.76. 21.2% power play, so there it is, hanging in there. Penalty kill's still bad. Can't really concern myself too much with it, can I? 4-1-5 <laughs> in the last 10. That's kind of crazy. That's a lot. Of, we got to get more clutch, though. Like, those are winnable games right there. Yeah, yeah, it's nice to get a point, but imagine if we won at least, like, three of those games. <laughs> That's a lot. That's a lot of points right there. Dude, look at Rista line and go. Insane. Skinner, while he's missed some games, missed four games... So on that pace, he had like another three points. Still not great. No, two or three points. Let's say two. 37 and 50 about. Not amazing. Uh, Mayorov now with 22 goals. Yeah, like I said, he's likely not going to get 40. That pace was just a little bit too insane. But you got to be impressed. He's got six freaking game winners. You still got to be impressed with Mayorov here. He's, he's a goal scorer through and through. Just imagine him up there with Eichel and Reinhardt for a bit. Yep, I'm liking that thought. Silverberg dropped off a bit. 
And by a bit, I mean a lot. That second line in general dropped off. Yeah. Okay. All right. Dolan, 25 points. Uh, Leapfrog Barry. So Dolan is uh, on base for about 40. So that's good. 40 point year out of Dolan. Ristolainen, perhaps a Norris candidate with the way he's playing. It's kind of crazy. He's doing really, really good. And again, Oliver, well, Barry's now interesting and even, so him and Ristolainen maybe seeming to lose some steam here, but Dolan and Gooley are doing well enough that I don't want to split them up. So, all right. Uh, Olmark got better. Lukanen been doing the same. He's hovering around those same stats. And those, those are respectable stats for a 21-year-old goaltender in 13 games play. Oh, Jesus. <coughs> God damn, my throat. Those are very respectable stats. Sorry about that, guys. I don't know, man. I'm still kind of getting over the cold I, I had. It's just fucking... Sometimes it just creeps up on you. Anyway. So still doing very good in that regard. Considering what our team is uh, working with here. We'll check progress reports again. I'm mainly going to focus... Does, yeah, we didn't see anything new from Mayroff. Okay, there we go. Airhoff grew a bit more. But, still a little slacking from some of the other areas. Come on, elites. Okay, there. Okay, see, there we go. There's there's McGrath. 80 overall now. So there it is. There's the growth. And it's not seeming to show at all, either. Alright, hold on. I gotta get water. Okay, I'm back. Uh, anyway. See, I'm McGrath. He was just at, like, a 78. So it's already up to an 80 with only 5 growth and it's not even green. So sometimes there's a weird thing here where guys seem to grow and then it doesn't reflect all that growth either. So I don't know if that might be what ha what's happening with him. But it's good to see him growing. All of our elites beginning to grow here. Very good for all of us. Because we want him to grow. Byfield's the only one slacking right now. But again, 75 overall, only 18. He's got plenty of time. So no need to worry about that. And the low starter, growing quite a bit. Okay, and let's continue here. I don't fucking, my throat is going crazy right now. Alright, so we're almost up to the, there we go, There, there's the deadline. I don't want to skip it. We're almost up to the deadline here. Not too much time left. My voice is rejoicing. <laughs> my throat i should say that i'm almost done here it's been a trying day man my internet's been sucking so bad this might be the only video i'm able to put out uh o'regan's full of healed which sucks because i wanted to do seattle as well but it's just i've been having so many problems here i can't wait to move man don't have to <laughs> no I can't wait to move so i don't have to deal with fucking charter anymore get to deal with comcast i don't know i've heard they're slightly better ISPs, am I right? All of them are pieces of crap and they like to throttle you and do weird stuff and deny you the service that you pay for. And be completely... Um... Completely justified in doing so. Because they basically have monopolies on certain places. It's like, oh, what town do you live in? Oh yeah, that's... You only have like one internet to choose from. Like, in the town I live from, you can only have Charter. That's it. So, what the fuck? <laughs> That's why I have to stream Sharks games. Because I actually can't get the channel that it's on. It's on Comcast Sports Network. So clearly, because Charter... And I canceled the TV package anyway, because I don't fucking watch TV anymore. Is, uh... <laughs> so yeah, anyway. Minus that rant here. We're actually 30, 22, and 9. Could actually be a freaking playoff team. Speak of the devil, 69... Nice, nice. 69 points, nice. Um, speaking of the devil, we're in a wild card slot up by, like, what the hell? Clearly we made our team worse, and we're not, our scoring has actually dipped. That's first line, though, so maybe other places are, we're getting it from, but our, we haven't actually got a lot of scoring recently, it seems. So I'm not too sure what the hell's going on, but that'll be interesting to check. Yeah, our actually scoring went down, but our goals against is getting better. Our scoring's been go keeping going down, though. 2.98, 2.72... 
21.5 power play. Penalty kill has been around the same, 75. So maybe we want to try to fix that. As a... Uh, if we're going to be... I don't think we'll be a playoff team, but if we do. 7-3 and three in the last 10. Crazy. Just crazy. Eichel, Reinhardt. Hold on. Nylander with 40. Yeah, we've definitely dropped off. <coughs> Jesus. See, so the day I didn't record and I sent out that message, this was basically what happened, but I couldn't even get like five words out. Ugh, and it hurt more. <laughs> Look at Marov, man. 24. Like I said, yeah, he's actually slacked in the goal scoring, definitely. But 24 goals. He might not even actually get 30 now. He needs six more. He's got 20 games to do it, so I hope he does. I would love to see him get 30 goals here. But, uh, don't know if that's a for sure thing. I'd love to see him get 30 goals and, like, 45 points. That'd be nice. Middle stat. Oh, he is, oh, second line has dropped off horrifically. Remember, they are crushing it earlier. Not so much now, and I'm kind of really starting to get disappointed. Silverberg's got to get out of here, honestly. I don't think he's a deadline move, but... Maybe a trade at the draft move or beginning of next year move because he has not lived up to expectations. And we're paying him six million. Yikes. And Mayorov should be at least good enough for second line by next year, so screw him. Don't need him anymore. Yeah, we've dropped off a bit. But Ristolainen is not disappointing. 51 points, 20 more games. He's at least hitting 60-65. So that's amazing. And Lukanen got a bit worse here. Not playing as much as I'd want him to, but... Yeah. I might actually switch to a manual, because I want to elite... I probably want to give him, like, 25 games played. But we'll see what happens. All right, guys, um, I'm going to leave it to you. I can't really talk much more. My throat actually starting to really hurt now. I do apologize, but I don't know. This cold has been something weird. It keeps going up and down, coming back and going away and coming back and going away. And Maybe I'm trying to do too much, but <coughs> right now I just can't fucking talk. So I leave it up to you guys. Give me any and all ideas for any sorts of trades that you would like to see at this deadline and if we should go for a playoffs or not. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to leave that like and I'll see you guys in the next one. If watching my videos just isn't enough sin for you, be sure to go over there on Twitter and shoot me a follow and you could even join our Discord server as well to talk with some of the other sinners out there. The links to both are in the description.